Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to be continuing Niagara and projectiles in Unreal 4, specifically firing projectiles. Now, as a note, what I've been showing you is a good way to visualize and debug your projectiles. This may not be the way that you want to set up your gameplay. So, as a quick recap, we have a Niagara system, we have a Niagara emitter, and we have a blueprint, which is our projectile. So, if I open that up, we have our Niagara system in here, and then we also have projectile movement. We also set up a simple event graph for after two bounces, our Niagara system will spawn a simple explosion, another Niagara system, and then it's going to destroy itself. So let's go take a look at that really quick. I'm gonna play and simulate. One, two, boom. Perfect. All right, so now I'd like to set up another blueprint so that we can spawn our projectile. And we can spawn it as many times as we want. So I'm gonna right click in the content browser. We're gonna create a blueprint class from an actor. And we'll give it a name, whatever you want. But at the end, we're gonna put firing. And we'll open that up. And visually, you don't really have to put anything in here if you don't want to, but we will in a little bit. So I'm gonna to go to the event graph and I'm gonna get rid of event actor begin overlap and event tick because we don't need those. Now to fire, I'm gonna be using keyboard inputs. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna type in keyboard, if I can spell, and I'm gonna use K. Now off of this, when we press a button, I want to spawn an actor from class. And now this actor is going to be our projectile. So in my case, it's BP Pong Ping. Select that. And now we need to give it somewhere to spawn. So in my viewport, I'm going to add a component and I'm going to add an arrow. So we're going to get a reference to this in a second. But we want to make sure that this is visible in game. We're going to type in hidden in game. So we'll be able to see it then. And we'll turn that off. And we'll come back to the event graph. So I'm going to get a reference from this arrow. I'm going to drag off of here. And we're looking for get world transform. We don't want get world location. We actually want get world transform. This way we get the location and we get the rotation. And we'll drag that in. And now the last thing we need to do is we need to actually enable inputs on this. So off of event begin play, we're gonna type in enable input. And then we also need to get a reference to this player controller to enable the inputs on the player controller. So we're gonna drag out and we'll just type in get player controller and we should pretty much be set up. I'm gonna click compile, I'm gonna minimize, and I'm gonna take out my previous BP. I'm gonna delete that so that now we can just fire. I'm gonna align this quick. And now another note is that when you're enabling inputs like this, enable input, get player controller, you want to make sure that you have a player start in your level. So I have one here. And when we play, we don't want to play in simulate. We actually want to play in selected viewport. So I'm going to play in selected viewport. I'm going to look around. We can see our arrow. I'm going to hit K on the keyboard. One, two, boom. And now we can also fire as many as we want. Now this is a pretty good setup to fire wherever we want. And now we can make adjustments to our effect as we see fit. You know, say that we didn't want this to bounce anymore, then we can go back to our base projectile, we can go to the projectile movement, and we'll turn off should bounce, but we also need to change our health because now it's not going to bounce. It's only ever going to have one impact. So we'll come to our health, and we'll just set this to one instead of two. Hit compile. Let's make sure these are lined up. I think they are. And we'll play. And now we'll hit K on the keyboard. Boom. 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 There still is an arch though. So let's go take a look at that. Go to projectile movement. 
and I'm gonna turn off projectile gravity scale. I'm gonna set it to zero so it doesn't fall and it just goes straight. I'll minimize this, click play, okay. Boom, boom. And the last thing I wanna note is in the firing blueprint. So right here we used get world transform instead of get world location. And that's because it has the location and the rotation in it. And what's beneficial about that is if we take this blueprint in the world, the firing blueprint, and if we rotate this, the projectile is actually going to follow it. It's actually going to follow that rotation. If we use just get world location, it wouldn't do that. All right, guys, if you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.